Hey everyone, Charles Judd here from Kevin Wallace Training, and in this video we're going to take a look at some ways that we can influence BGP path selection. BGP is a topic found in Encore, Anarsi, and CCIE, so it's a very prevalent and important topic for our studies. Let's jump in now and take a look. There are some special cases where we may need to override certain BGP default behaviors, and we're going to look at some of the ways that we can do that. In this first topology, we're using a couple of routers, R1, an autonomous system 65100, and R2, an autonomous system 65200. They're connected over a 10.1.1.0 slash 24 network, and they're advertising their respective loopback addresses that we can see here on the topology. Loopback 1.1.1.1 for router 1 and loopback 2.2.2.2 for router 2. Let's first look at using the local dash AS command. This allows BGP sessions to be established using an alternate autonomous system number than the one under which the BGP process is running. This is helpful in cases where maybe you have a couple of corporate entities or maybe there are ISPs and they're merging together, and you need an autonomous system to appear as though it's running under an alternate number. That's a method we can use to migrate sites together. So in our case on R1, we're already running under BGP process 65100. And let's suppose that we want to merge this with autonomous system number 100. We're gonna change our local BGP process on this router to AS100, but we're gonna configure BGP to still appear as 65100 to router 2. And that way we can bring our BGP peering back up with router 2 without having to touch any of the configuration on the remote router 2 peer. So let's start on R1 and say show run pipe 2 section BGP just to see what we currently have in place. And you can see our existing process number BGP 65100, our autonomous system. So let's go under global configuration mode and let's take that out. Let's say no router BGP 65100. We're going to see our neighbor adjacency with router two go down. So that's expected. So now let's put a new process in place. We'll say router BGP autonomous system number 100. And now we can point to our neighbor by saying neighbor. The IP address of router 2 is 10.1.1.2. That is in remote AS 65200. Pretty standard configuration, nothing new here. But when I hit enter, we're going to start getting some error messages. And that's because on router 2, our neighbor command that's pointing to router 1 actually has remote AS 65100. So it's expecting us to be in that autonomous system, even though we're in AS 100 now. That's why we're getting those error messages. So we can make ourselves appear as an alternate ASN than the BGP process 100 we're running under. We can do that by saying neighbor, again 10.1.1.2, and now we want to use the local-as keyword, and that's going to let us indicate a local autonomous system number for that router. So we're going to say 65100, which was our original autonomous system number. And we'll give that just a moment. And now you see we have a neighbor adjacency. It tells us that we are back in the upstate. So even though we're not running BGP ASN 65100 on this router, we're running under process 100. It still appears as though we are to router two. So now, Let's also go ahead and advertise our loopback address back out by saying network 1.1.1.0. We'll put our mask in 255.255.255.0. We'll end and we'll again say show run pipe to section BGP. And you'll notice that now we're running, of course, router BGP autonomous system 100. We have our neighbor and the remote autonomous system 65200, but here is where we indicated that to this neighbor, we want to appear as autonomous system 65100. So let's jump over to router two and let's say show IP BGP. And we see our advertised loopback prefix 
from router one, just as we would expect to see. We see the next hop is router one, 10.1.1.1. And notice at the end that now we have two autonomous system numbers associated with this, AS100 and AS65100. And we read this from right to left. So this tells us that this prefix, of course, originated in AS100, which we're running under. Then it went to AS65100 before it came to our local AS of 65200. So that's how we would use that local dash AS command. Now, if we want to hide this particular AS, we can add a couple of optional keywords onto that command. Let's go back to router one. We'll go back under router BGP100. And let's arrow up to get back to our neighbor command. So there is our neighbor with the local AS of 65100. And let's add the keyword no hyphen prepend and replace hyphen AS. This is going to stop our prefix advertisements from informing the router about our actual BGP process that's running on the router. So let's hit enter there and let's jump back to router two you'll see that we had a reset happen. So our neighbor adjacency is back up now on router two. So let's go here again and say show IP BGP. So we again see our 1.1.1.0 prefix coming from router one, the next hop. But this time we only see the local AS that we indicated. We don't see AS 100, we only see the one that we indicated as the local AS. We have successfully stopped that ASN from being advertised out to the router to peer. Let's now look at the allow AS-in option. So let's say we have a topology as we see here. We have three routers. We have R1 and R3 both in autonomous system 65100. And we have R2 and 65200. So let's suppose that the AS65100 routers are from the same customer, but they're in two different locations. So we have two different locations, two different networks using the same autonomous system number. What's going to happen is a BGP loop prevention mechanism is going to check for incoming prefixes and make sure that they're not originating from the same autonomous system number that the local router is in. So essentially what's going to happen is the advertised prefix from R3 are not going to appear on R1 because of this, because it's going to know that it's in its own autonomous system number. We can override that with the allow AS-in command and specifically allow those prefixes to come in. I already have a BGP neighbor adjacency between all of the routers. And again, they're advertising their loopback addresses, R1 being 1.1.1.1, R2 at 2.2.2.2, and R3 at 3.3.3.3. Let's start on R2 and let's say show IP BGP. And we can see that we're able to see both the 1.1.1.0 prefix and the 3.3.3.0 prefix as we would expect to see, both coming from autonomous system 65100. If we go to R1 and do the same thing, say show IP BGP, Notice we do not see the 3.3.3.0 network from router three. And that's because that prefix is arriving from the same autonomous system number that we're currently in. So if you have a situation like this, we can run a very simple command to correct that. On router one, let's go under global configuration mode and our local BGP, router BGP 65100, and let's say neighbor, 10.1.1.2 and we want to say allow as-in that's the keyword that we want to use and this is going to allow the route to now be installed in the bgp table so let's break out of here and let's again run show ip bgp and this time notice we do see the 3.3.3.0 network we see that it first comes from 65100 and then it goes to router two as 65200 before arriving here locally on this router. We can of course also do the same thing on router three to make sure we're not getting a similar situation on that side. Let's now look at the AS path prepend option. 
We have the following topology containing four autonomous system numbers. You can see in autonomous system 1000, we're connected out to the internet. And that happens from R1, which we have two paths. We can go through autonomous system number 200 or autonomous system number 300, routers two and three respectively. We want R1 to prefer the path through AS200. And we can do that with the AS prepend command. Remember the AS path attribute, which we can see in the output of our show IP BGP command. And that's a well-known mandatory attribute. So it's present for all exchanged prefixes between BGP peers. That's used for loop prevention. By prepending or adding an autonomous system number to the traffic path, we can artificially make a route appear longer than it actually is, which is going to influence our BGP path selection. Let's see how this is done. First on our internet router, let's say show IP BGP 1.1.1.0 slash 24. That is the loopback address for R1. And that prefix is being advertised through BGP. Now you can see here we actually have two paths available. It tells us right here. And we see one through 3.3.3.3, which is router three. And we see that's listed as the best path currently. We also see a path through 2.2.2.2, .2 which is of course router two. We can also see this if we say show IP BGP, where we can see the 1.1.1.0 network, and we see there are two paths listed for that. The best path is indicated by this greater than sign. You can see up here in our status codes, that tells us this is the best route. And that route starts in autonomous system 100, which is router one, and then goes through autonomous system 300, which is router three. Again, R3 is listed as the best path. So let's use the AS path prepend option to influence BGP to prefer the AS200 route over route two. So let's first go to router one. We'll go under global configuration mode and we're first gonna create a prefix list. And this prefix list is going to permit all of our prefix advertisements. So let's say IP prefix hyphen list. I'm gonna call this AS100. We have a loopback network being advertised, which is 1.1.1.0 slash 24. So let's say permit. Actually, I need to put my permit statement first. I put that in backwards almost. So permit 1.1.1.0 slash 24. So we have that very simple IP prefix list. Now let's create a couple of route maps. One of those is going to have the prepend option and one will not have the prepend option. So first let's say route hyphen map, and we'll name the first one AS100. We'll hit enter to go under route map configuration mode, and we'll say match IP address. And we wanna match that to a prefix list, which is AS100. We'll hit enter there. We'll back up a step, back into global configuration mode. And we'll create another route map called AS100. I'll call this one prepend. And I'm again going to match the IP address of our prefix list, AS100. This time, though, we're going to prepend our own autonomous system number onto this route map so that we can influence our path and make this path look longer than it actually is. So let's say, let's hit enter first. And we'll say set AS hyphen path. And we want to say prepend. And then we'll indicate if we look at contextual help, we can indicate our autonomous system number. So we're just going to put our own autonomous system number. We're going to prepend that there. And if we look at contextual help, we can continue to put those in there. I'm going to add that on there twice a second time. So I'm going to say set AS path prepend 100 100. And I'll hit enter. Now we can exit back to global configuration mode, and we want to assign these route maps to our neighbors. Since we want to influence our path to take AS200, let's apply the route map with the AS prepend option to neighbor R3 in AS300. So let's go under router BGP 100, we'll hit enter, and we'll use a neighbor command, we'll say neighbor 
20.1.1.2, and we'll say route hyphen map, followed by the name of our route map, which is AS100. And again, we want to use the one with the prepend option attached to that. And of course, we want to finally indicate our direction, which we want to be outbound. Now we can do the same thing for neighbor R2 in AS200. So let's say neighbor 10.1.1.2, route hyphen map. This time we'll use our AS100 route map, again in the outbound direction. Let's jump back over to our internet router, which is in AS1000. And this is our, again, our internet transit router. So let's look at our BGP table. Let's say show IP BGP. And you'll notice right here was our original output. Remember our best path was indicated as starting in AS100 and then going to AS300. Now our best path has indeed changed thanks to our prepend option. Now the best path is seen as going from 100 to 200. So in other words, going from router one to router two and then out to the internet. We can see our prepended AS numbers here, our AS100 that we added onto there twice to artificially make that path seem longer. So this is exactly what we wanna see. We've artificially influenced our path to seem that the shortest path is through AS200. So that's a look at several options we have for influencing our BGP path selection.